Hi everyone, it's Mathia Ford, registered dietitian and creator of the Love Your Kidneys Delicious CKD Meal Planning Course. And I wanna welcome you in today. I'm excited that you're here. I wanna say welcome to all the people watching the replay as well. You're just, um, feel free to make a comment, add a comment over below and I will respond to it as we're talking through today. But um, today I wanted to talk about what I learned from my family member having kidney disease. And if you've ever heard my story, you know that that family member is my mom. So I want to talk through a little bit about what that experience was like of her having kidney disease and kind of how it's shaped what I do today. So um, how I eventually made kidney disease my work that I do every day. I'm a registered and licensed dietitian, which just means that I went to school and attended college, did an internship and passed a national registration exam all about how to um, how food and nutrition works in your body and um, how your body responds to food. Hi, Judy. Thanks for being here. Um, so I've been a registered dietitian for over 22 years. And um, I passed my exam in 97. And um, so for the last nine years, I focused really solely on kidney disease. And um, that is because of a few things that happened in my family and made me realize how big of a need this was. Um, it all started with my mom was diagnosed, uh, when my mom was diagnosed with stage three chronic kidney disease. Um, I was working at a hospital as the food service kitchen manager. I love writing menus. I love making recipes. I love somewhat doing the nutritional analysis, although that's not my favorite. I like testing recipes though. Um, I made menus for all the diets. I knew how to cook on a large scale. So I worked at the local veterans hospital. We had over a hundred inpatients, probably 300, and we would cook meals, you know, three times a day for them. And so I knew a lot about how to make a recipe that would feed a lot of people. Um, I enjoy making food that is great and healthy and tastes good. And you might think that hospital food tastes bad, or you may assume that hospital food's going to taste bad, but I, uh, personally, was I'm impassioned to make the food as good as I could. So I never accepted that it had to taste bad. It was always my best effort to make it taste good. So um, that's where it all started. She got diagnosed and I knew very little specifically about kidney disease. As a dietitian, you learn kind of a, a broad brush of a lot of things. And then most of the time you become kind of specialized. And I had specialized into the bulk food uh, kitchen feeding and doing a lot of management. If you've ever been in a management position, you know that a lot of it is people time. So I spent a lot of time doing that. But once my mom had kidney disease, I knew she needed my help. Um, I've told you before that I do work. My dad lives with us and my mom lives locally and I help them both as much as I can. But um, one of the things that happened is I realized, you know, hey, I, I didn't know that much about kidney disease. So I started to spend a lot of time researching and learning more about it and the restrictions and how to manage the disease. And um, that's where I started to realize that there was something wrong. I used a lot of don't lists, like don't eat all these foods on this list. And I found it frustrating because instead of starting from that place of, yes, I can have this or yes, I can try this, I was always starting with no. And many of the food portions of the recipes that we found that seemed to be good were too big. So it was um, really a need to cut them down or have leftovers. And my mom hated wasting food. She lived by herself and she was really just cooking for herself. And she hated wasting food and um, having either a bunch of leftovers or just not not having the right proportions to make for one person or two people. Um, so uh, I was stressed out because I didn't know at the time what dietary changes needed to be made to help the most. So I'm very much from a point of what can I do that will um, make the biggest difference with you know, what effort can I make that'll make the biggest difference? So we both, my mom and me, were both frustrated and tired and exhausted and 
just overwhelmed at the sheer amount of information but lack of direction that we found that we were able to get you know you can everybody's got a lot of a little bit of stuff and a little bit of direction but there was nothing that was clear that like this is what you need to do next and i'm sure you can relate to that i'm sure you've experienced that yourself so um i'm not telling you anything you don't know i'm gonna give me a second i need a drink um most of the recommendations that we could find at the time nine years ago were to cut out all the fruits and vegetables with high amounts of potassium and to um, reduce salt intake. While I still agree today with the recommendation to reduce salt intake, I don't agree with the recommendation to cut out all the good food. So, but when we did it, that left us very bland, very gray meals to eat, corn, rice, chicken, you know, just bleh, bland. Um, and while she, she does love baked chicken, it got old quickly. So, the biggest thing was we were afraid to make a mistake. We didn't know if we, you know, ate, she ate too many tomatoes. Was that going to be the thing that pushed her over the edge and make her condition worse? And I was beside myself. I was trying to weigh and count and measure and read and looking everywhere. So I started to look a little bit in some different places into health and diet recommendations in different areas to see, um, you know, how I could make those work for her. So even though I, I'm trained in nutrition, I'm, I struggled with this. I was able to make the changes to improve her health finally by looking into other areas to looking at better patterns, better ways to kind of get her diabetes under control and keep everything manageable. And um, we did try lots of things. And I know that that's not any different from you. I know you can relate. You've probably tried a lot of different things. Um, I know it's, it's hard to make a choice when it's like, you're afraid of food. It's like, you're afraid of what is this food going to do? This suddenly, I mean, I'm being told not to eat this and, and should I eat it or not? And, um, I did figure it out and I know you can too. I'm not special. I'm not different. Um, and as a matter of fact, I started probably in a lot of ways in a very similar situation to you. It's just that I had the knowledge to kind of take it and weed out what was um, not working. So I wanna show you how I made the changes that make life easier to handle and manage her diet. I do teach this to people. I teach it all the time. I talk about it all the time. And um, I do have a um, program coming out on February 17th. It's called Love Your Kidneys, Delicious CKD Meal Planning. And if you want to know more about it, I have a um, guidebook that kind of goes through the steps. If you go to renaldiethq.com forward slash MPCKD, and um, that'll put you on the wait list, but it'll also give you the um, information about the course, kind of a little preview, talking through like what I did, what I changed, and how it's changed. Um, but this class is going to be, so it opens on February 17th. You can purchase it. And then starting on February 26th, we're going to do an hour to an hour and a half every week, different training, different module to learn about what um, changes to make, what to do that week. And then I also have three days where I'm going to have um, question and answer for an hour to an hour and a half specifically about what you're doing that day or that week. And, and those will all be live and recorded. It'll give me the chance to adjust to what you need, but it'll also give you the chance to get um, specific answers and, and know kind of where we're going with it. And make sure that you're on track. So I'm excited to bring that to you. I've worked this out. I've worked out this method. Um, and my goal is at the end of the program that you'll be confident and planning meals, putting meals together um, that work for your diet. So at the end of the time, I want you to be able to say, okay, I can make a meal plan in 15 minutes a week. I know what to do. I know what to change. Recipes, um, meal plans, meal grocery lists, all that stuff. We're going to talk about all of it. We're going to talk about how I tweaked um, our process and what you can do to improve your process and then how you can go forward. So how do you adjust and how do you change? So that's my goal. Um, at the end of the program. So if you want to head on over to there and grab the waitlist, it's going to have 
uh, a guidebook that talks about the four ways, the four steps to progress and improving your diet. And um, I was going to answer questions, but I don't see any. All I see is Judy's little good morning. So if anybody's got any questions, pop them in the comments. I will be glad to answer questions later too. So if you if you're watching this in the replay and you have a question, feel free to pop it in there and I will get back to you. Thanks guys. I really, I really love talking to you. Uh, let me know what you have questions about and be looking for another email from me. I will be talking about the special opening on February 17th and what that's gonna involve. So I'll talk soon.